Booster Gold. He's the best hero you've never heard of. The man, the myth, the not quite legend. Is there a D list for legends? Because if so, at the top of that list would be none other than Michael John Carter, aka Booster Gold. Most people have not heard of Booster Gold in our universe or his, and yet Booster is going to be getting his own series in Chapter 1 of the new DCU alongside characters like the Amazons and the Green Lanterns, so he's going to be a big deal. And while no actors have been confirmed for the role, quite a few names have been floating around for a while. You see, unlike characters like Batman or Superman who've been played a bunch of different ways, Booster Gold has pretty much been the same guy since he burst out onto the scene in Booster Gold 1 in 1986. And because of that, fans know what to look for. But why now? Why am I covering Booster instead of the many higher profile characters who will be showing up soon like Batman or Supergirl? It's because I love Booster Gold. I have since I saw that episode of Justice League Unlimited almost 20 years ago. When people ask me which superhero I would most want to someday write, it's Booster Gold. 100% no question. Because he's my favorite kind of character. The huckster. The fraud. So many of my favorite characters are Booster Gold. Gilderoy Lockhart. Mysterio. Zap Brannigan. Hell, Booster Gold is basically Justin Hammer if he stole an Iron Man suit. Movies like Galaxy Quest, shows like Venture Brothers, about a pretender living a lie, faking it till he makes it. I think those characters are so much fun and can tell very real stories about confidence, failure, and the nature of true heroism. And these days, scams are everywhere. Look at Sam Bankman Freed, Elizabeth Holmes. I mean, Booster Gold is the superhero equivalent of the Fire Festival. He's cryptocurrency, the big short, catch me if you can. Booster Gold matters. So I want to take a look at all of the frontrunners to figure out once and for all who should play DC's Man from Tomorrow in a new installment of the slightly renamed Boostular. Well, wait a second. Music Necromancer on Twitter pointed this out. He's not just the Boostular, he's the Golden Boostular. Previously on The Golden Boostular, Nando eliminated a bunch of contestants you guys suggested. Jimmy Tatro. You could play the Gen Z booster like you kind of did in theater camp. It's a take I don't hate, but I don't think it feels right. Glenn Howerton. You're on the older side, 47, but you're still a golden god. I think I like you more for Lex, honestly, so I'm not in love here. Joel McHale. I hate to say this, but at 51, I think you're a little too old. Also sort of did this a few times. Just finished up Stargirl where you played a time-displaced, star-themed superhero who was a jerk to a very different degree and for a very different reason. Also, you didn't give Aunt May the toaster that one time. I think you could play a rival to Booster who sort of has it more together, like Rip or Rex Hunter, so I think this pick could work, but definitely not in my top seven. Phil Dunster. Jamie Tart. Your star is on the rise. You play the jerk with the heart of not quite gold, but something in Ted Lasso. You're in the right age range and an athlete. I could see it. Problem here is I just don't think you beat some of these other guys, but I think, Phil, you could do Booster Gold justice. Spencer Boldman. You seem fine, but besides Chippendales, I don't see a ton on your resume that puts you above the rest of these guys. Chris Pratt. So cool. I said in my fan casting James Gunn's friends video that you are not in my top five, but also you could totally do it. I still believe that, but you're not my favorite. Sean William Scott. My Eric O'Grady from way, way back. Sean William Scott, you already have a lot of booster in many past performances. From the Stifler days, you've excelled at playing a douchey airhead. I think you're a ton of fun to watch. I love your sunny appearance, but I don't think you stand out here among some of these names. Eric Christian Olsen. I have similar thoughts about you, not another teen movie is Eric Christian Olsen. Like, but don't love you. If you got the role, I'd be excited, but you're not my pick. James Vanderbeek. Speaking of not another teen movie, let's talk about the movie it is based on. The Beak. You're fun. Also would not be bummed to see you here, but you're not in my top 10. Freddie Prince Jr. I think Freddie, you've got a slightly better shot here. More active these days and I've really warmed up to your shaggy. I think you're a better fit than Beak, but I'm not in love with you for this role. Graham Rogers. Another hard maybe. I think you've proven you can play a guy like this, but we're getting into the finals and things are getting competitive. Donald Glover. Okay, so if we're doing Troy Barnes mixed with Lando, I actually think you could be a really strong pick. You're happy to play a fool, you're incredibly funny, and just athletic enough. I don't think you would do it, feels like you wouldn't want to be tied down, but I'd love to see it. Jonathan Groff. It's an interesting pick and you're clearly very talented, but I don't think you're top 7 material. Keegan-Michael Key. Keegan, you're a national treasure. I love Schmigadoon and Reboot. That being said, I don't think I really have any strong feelings about you for Booster. Macaulay Culkin. Nah. Ben Schwartz. Eh, I definitely don't like you more here than I do for Plastic Man. Andy Samberg. Same. 
Bill Hader. Same, although I think you're probably the least booster out of those last three. In fact, I think you'd be an interesting Ted, like Blue Beetle too, but I don't feel booster. Anthony Starr. Eh, you're already known for a huge superhero role. I just don't love it. Mason Gooding. I don't think this one's crazy. On the younger side, popular with the kids, and I think it's kind of funny if you're related to Rod Tidwell, because Booster is the superhero equivalent of Show Me the Money. This could work. Regé Jean Page. Maybe? I think my thing here is I haven't seen you nail a truly comedic role. In D&D, your character was funny, but mostly because of the lack of emotion. I don't know if you can be at the center of this kind of story. Kirby Hayborn. I don't know why you are here, how you made it onto the list. Someone must have suggested you, and I haven't seen anything you've done. Maybe? Cameron Monaghan. Yes, this could work. And I know now, after seeing some of Shameless, that you can be more of a jerk than I expected. But not my top seven. Bo Burnham. Okay, I think this pick is fascinating. On one hand, Burnham, you're smart. You definitely bring something unusual to Booster, and maybe that's exactly what we need to bring this guy into the mainstream. On the other hand, Booster Gold looked just like a superhero, and in my experience, Bo Burnham, you just don't. It's part of your charm. So I don't know if you're right for Booster or if you'd even want to do it, but I do think there's something here. Darren Chris. Yeah, I think you could totally nail the performer in Booster, the showman, but not a humongous fan. Honestly, also think you could be a good Ted Cord, but I think you could be an okay Booster. Josh Hutcherson. Listen, Hutch, I got nothing against you. To be fair, I've not seen Future Man, which seems to be where you want a lot of people over. I'll probably watch it eventually because it stars my new favorite, The Boy, Tech Knight. You're also one of our best short kings, but I just don't see the jerkiness for Booster. Like, I've seen the Hunger Games movies and a couple of other things you're in, and you always strike me as a nice guy. And that's just not Booster. Now, Finnick, he's some Booster, but not PETA. Dylan Playfair. Love this suggestion. You're so funny on Letterkenny where you play Riley, one half of the Airhead Hockey duo. You get strong booster presence. Now I haven't seen you in anything else, but your performance there and your relative lack of megastar power compared to some of these other guys is enough to put you at least in my top 15. I would love to see what you do with this role. Sam Rockwell. You'd be great 10 years ago since Booster Gold is Justin Hammer in an Iron Man suit, but you're too old now. Joe Keery. I have seen you pitched for every male superhero I possibly could. Johnny Storm, Nightwing, Superman, you always come up in these. And I don't know, I think you're fine, but I don't think you work for every role. That being said, I think you could be a solid booster. You play a jerk with a heart of gold on Stranger Things. It tracks. Sean Sippos. This is an interesting one because you played Adam Strange on Krypton, and because some of the character choices, it certainly seemed like you might have been Booster Gold originally. You had the look, you didn't think you were a very good hero, and you were keeping some secrets. I don't think that's enough to put you in the top seven here, but this could work. Justin Timberlake. Yeah, this was a surprising suggestion. On the surface, could be fun. A little deeper, I don't know if you could do this. You feel like a star built on likability and coolness. Booster is a real piece of work. It doesn't seem like he's right up your alley. Wyatt Russell. Ooh, this is a tough one. On one hand, you're known for playing a very specific kind of guy. Very down to earth, humble, troubled. And I know someone at home who's a big fan of some show I've never seen is screaming at their TV or phone right now, but that's just how I know you. And I've seen you all over the place recently. I don't love or hate you for this. Alden Ehrenreich. Okay, so Booster and Han Solo, not that different. Cocky, roguish, don't follow the rules, shoot first, always in trouble. I can see this working. In fact, I can see this being a great post-Oppenheimer move for you. Are you top tier? Maybe not yet, but this could work. Kid Cudi. You know, I liked you on Comedy Bang Bang and you would be a super fresh face here. Not in my top seven, but I don't hate it. Dave Franco. Yes, you've got the juice for this. Loved you as Xavier on After Party. Think you're very funny, you can play a huge tool, and you're just charming enough to make this character not completely unlikable. Austin Butler. I don't know, maybe. You're a good actor, but you don't strike me as Booster Gold. Zac Efron. Sure. Yeah, I could see this. You look at Neighbors, and I think you've got very strong Booster Gold energy. And apparently you're in incredible shape for that new wrestling movie. So we can use some of that here. Kumail Nanjiani. So my inspiration for this character is less Kingo and more that huckster Jedi from the second episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi. That is Booster Gold. So if you could channel that energy, Kumail, you could be good but not top seven material. Chase Crawford. You're already kind of doing this on the boys, but actually I think this could work. Booster is very much the deep without some of the creepiness. Lucas Till. Liked you in those X-Men movies, watched some of MacGyver, and I could see the charisma, but I just don't think you're as smug as you are sarcastic. You're too cool and likable, at least in my experience. So not in top seven. Shane Top. 
Okay, so this was tricky. When I posted about this on Twitter, I got the most suggestions for you, Shane. Now, I'm not very familiar with Smosh, but I watch plenty of clips along with your appearances on the Goldbergs, and I see the potential. Even though you don't have a ton of experience playing a big jerk in a show or movie, you seem to have created that identity as part of your Smosh persona. And you do look like Booster. I don't think you'd be a bad pick. But Shane, when I look at you next to some of these other guys, I do think that experience gap makes a difference. Again, if you think he's a great booster, I don't disagree with you, but in my opinion, he's not the best. And I think when you see the top seven, you'll get it. So that leaves my seven potential golden boosterlers. We were going to do roses, but Booster Gold wouldn't want a rose. He'd want a Booster Gold action figure. So when I call your name, step up and get your Booster Gold action figure. Glenn Powell. Okay. Billy Magnuson. Absolutely. Ryan Gosling. So cool. Josh Segarra. Oh, hell yeah. Jake McDorman. Okay. Will Poulter. Yes, mother. And Ryan Hansen. Okay. So before we meet the final Boosterlers, I want to take a look at the man himself. What makes Booster Gold tick? Why do fans love him so much? And what does it take to play a great booster? So, join me at the Aculo Zone. Booster Gold has an origin that's sort of messy for normal comics reasons, but also because he's a time traveler. Michael John Carter was a promising college football quarterback from the 25th century. That's right, we're still going to have football in 400 years. Sure. Michael, or as he was known, Booster, needed some quick cash to pay for his mother's operation, so he started betting on his own games. Michael got caught, and the only job Michael could get was one as a security guard at a museum. At the museum, he met a security robot named Skeets, and they spent a lot of time learning about the heroes of the 21st century. They were beloved, idolized, popular. And then Michael got an idea. It was so much easier to be a hero back then. If he could go back in time, with his advanced technology and knowledge of future events, Michael could be a hero too. So Michael stole some superhero paraphernalia, a force field generator, a super suit, a flight ring, and some wrist gauntlets, and he and Skeet snuck into Rip Hunter's Time Sphere, which was part of an exhibit at the museum. And it was unlocked and powered. And Michael and Skeets traveled back to whatever present day is. Originally, this was the 1980s, and a weird little piece of the story is that Michael, as this new hero gold star, saved then-President Ronald Reagan. And Reagan thanked Michael publicly, but when Michael accidentally introduced himself as Booster, I mean Gold, Reagan, probably too busy thinking about the Sandinistas to care, christened his new hero Booster Gold. And it stuck. It just goes to show you, it's hard to get rid of a nickname. Since then, Booster has made many attempts, some even successful, to join the Justice League, even though most of the founders can see right through him. He was a big player on the Justice League international team that was created in the wake of many main JL members leaving the team. It's there Booster met Ted Kord, aka the second Blue Beetle, and the two have been best friends ever since. They're basically the DC odd couple. Michael is a well-meaning, fame-obsessed doofus with stolen powers. Ted is a more serious but still fun, well-organized super genius with technology he created. But they really are one of the top five most significant friendships in all of comics. Like, sure, Batman and Superman are friends, but their friendship is not the defining relationship of their history. Michael and Ted sort of are. And after Ted was killed by Maxwell Lord, Michael tried as hard as he could to bring Ted back to life, but was unsuccessful. During those adventures, he spent some time with the third Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes, and was almost sort of a mentor to the young hero. As much as Booster Gold could be. The death of Ted seemed to focus Michael. He finally had something to be heroic about, a true sense of purpose that he'd always been searching for. And eventually, Michael became a true hero. He worked with the Time Master, Rip Hunter, his secret son, on some time travel missions that saved reality, but because of the nature of time travel, Booster Gold's involvement needed to remain a secret. And thus, Booster went from being the greatest hero you'd never heard of because he isn't actually a very notable hero, to the greatest hero you've never heard of because he was a notable hero who needed to keep a low profile, choosing true heroism over the fame he once sought. He's since gone back and forward in time and rewritten his own destiny. He's usually the only character who is immune to time travel reset nonsense, so he has an interesting role in stories like Flashpoint. There have also been a couple of other identities Michael Carter has gone by over the years, most notably Supernova, a costume Booster would use to go undercover and then gift to his ancestor who immediately lost it, and Wave Rider, a different superhero who was recreated after Flashpoint. The Look the most important thing visually about Booster Gold is that he looks like a superhero. 
Like, if you see this guy show up in his outfit, you go, oh, that's a superhero. Then he opens his mouth, then you go, ah, never mind. All right, that's not completely true. Because the most visually important part of Booster Gold is his immensely punchable face. He's got that big, smug grin that makes you go, hey, that guy. I do think it's important that Michael is athletic. Remember, Michael was a star college quarterback. He doesn't need to be Henry Cavill or anything, but traditionally quarterbacks are in good shape and tall, so I think that helps define Booster visually. Big question, does Booster Gold need to be white? Need? Not necessarily. After all, the second live action version of Booster was played by Donald Faison, and I think that could have worked. However, I do think there is something to Booster's whiteness. After all, he's the ultimate example of superhero white privilege. He took some equipment and just expected to be embraced as a hero, because that's what someone like him would do. I also just don't think the first non-white hero headlining a new DCU solo series can get his powers from stealing them. I just don't think it would play. However, I'm not going to count out great picks if they're not white. I just think there's a good chance we'll get a white booster gold. Besides that, I think a lot of the rest of his traits are up for grabs. He's not from somewhere specific besides the future. He is not any specific age besides older than college by at least a year. After all, the show could be set 10 years after Booster got to our time. Who's to say? Now, you probably want to keep Booster Gold a guy, even though 2023 has really given us a great set of comedies about women who kind of stink. So, like, are No Hard Feelings Jennifer Lawrence or Bottoms Rachel Sennott or even Totally Killers Kiernan Shipka terrible Booster's Gold? Not really, but I don't think the gender swap is likely. They could play his sister, Michelle, aka Gold Star, but honestly, I don't think that's the best place for any of those three, who I think could all fit into different new DCEU roles that will probably get a video eventually, so probably not worth it here. I'm imagining Booster Gold will be a comedy in the vein of, and let's not get ahead of ourselves here, okay? You promise? In the vein of The Nice Guys and Barbie, starring a handsome, charismatic idiot who needs to learn some selflessness and self-respect. So the actor needs to be able to nail the self-deprecating aspect of Booster's personality. He needs to play a guy who sucks. I love somebody with a background in comedy and someone who can go really over the top with it. Not that the character needs to stay there, but we need to see a big difference between Booster Gold when he is on, Booster Gold when he is off, and normal Michael John Carter. Previous versions. As much as it surprises everyone who has read a Booster Gold comic, we've really only had two proper Booster Golds in live action, and neither of them got more than one episode. And maybe that's the point. He never gets as much attention as he believes he deserves. Booster shows up in a single episode of Smallville, Season 10, Episode 18, named Booster, played by Days of Our Lives as Eric Marstoff. In the episode, Booster shows up looking for the Scarab, which finds and bonds with Jaime Reyes, turning him into the new Blue Beetle. The out-of-control Beetle fights Booster and Clark, and Booster is forced to confront the fact that he's not a real hero to save Jaime. This Booster feels like Mystery Men's Captain Amazing. He's camera-friendly, covered in patches from sponsors, and a big jerk. And I think he works really well here. At this point in the series, Clark is trying to figure out what being a public hero looks like, so Booster is a great foil. People like him because he's got the look, and Clark needs to embrace that if he wants to be a successful hero, but he needs to do it his own way. And as far as the look of Booster Gold on screen, as far as Smallville was concerned, you could do much worse. The only other live action appearance of Booster Gold comes from Donald Faison kind of playing Booster in one episode of Legends of Tomorrow. I only say kind of because the fact that he's Booster is the last line of the episode, and while the episode introduces him, it's also the series finale, so he doesn't get a whole lot of time to booster it up. Apparently, the showrunner, in an attempt to save the series, petitioned with Warner Brothers to let him introduce Booster Gold, a character that they had been hinting at since literally the first episode. And they said yes, but the series still ended. Sort of feels like if they had done this in season, I don't know, 6, that may have generated enough interest to save the show. But hey, what do I know? In the series, Michael was known as a fixer, a member of the time police responsible for protecting a specific moment in time. His point was significant because it was the moment time travel was invented, although Booster was confused as to why a time traveler would want to end time travel. He clearly doesn't watch many movies. Booster, or Mike as he's called throughout the episode, is dressed like a golfer with a blue and gold color scheme and he has a golf ball sporting his trademark star. Skeets exists, but we learn in a comic he's been transformed into a helmet. Faison plays Booster as your classic immature jerk. He's selfish, impatient, and not incredibly bright. All Boosterific qualities. He doesn't get to do the media savvy thing, but it seems like maybe he's tried that all before and failed, hence his exile by the time cops. Overall, I really like Faison's Booster. He checks all the necessary boxes. My only hang up is I'm not quite sure he looks like he would be this version of Rip Hunter's dad, but hey, maybe time travel makes that possible. I don't know. But yeah, I don't think we've ever had a bad Booster Gold in live action. 
I don't think either Marstoff or Faison's booster should make the move to the new DCU. Even though conceivably, Booster Gold is one of the only characters who could survive a franchise-wide reset. I just prefer a new face here, and I don't think the baggage of people being confused about whether Smallville or Legends of Tomorrow counts is worth it, especially since I think there are plenty of other wonderful competitors. So to make my decision, I spend time with each contestant to figure out who is right for Booster. Starting with Billy Magnuson. Very few actors of this generation can play jerk quite like Billy. You may recognize Mags from his first big role alongside Chris Pine in the Into the Woods movie where Magnuson played Rapunzel's prince. And right there, boom, absolute FOA energy holding his own alongside one of the greats, Chris Pine. To be fair, Billy has been at it for a while before that in stage performances alongside Rosie Perez, Sigourney Weaver, and Meryl Streep. But besides one-off appearances in CSI, Law & Order, Blue Bloods, The Leftovers, and Boardwalk Empire, Into the Woods was Billy's first big role, which according to Billy, he got because Meryl recommended him. That's high praise. After that, he really took off with small but memorable parts in The Big Short, Ingrid Goes West, Bridge of Spies, and the Get Shorty show that apparently existed. And at least in Big Short and Ingrid, he played some version of the same guy. A tool. Either a mortgage broker scamming people into houses they couldn't afford, or the bro who blackmails Aubrey Plaza. And right in the middle of all of that, you have American Crime Story, where Billy played OJ's live-in beach bum friend, Kate O'Kalen. Billy was quickly becoming one of those guys from that thing. I would say Game Night signals a shift in his career. The comedy became sort of a cult classic and Billy signified his role as one of Hollywood's best creeps. He comes out of Game Night and gets small roles in blockbusters like Aladdin, The Many Saints of Newark, and No Time to Die, and a starring role in HBO's Made for Love. Billy's been busy. He's the guy you call when your story needs a self-obsessed jerk. Someone you're immediately not supposed to like. And based on the upcoming section of his IMDb page, he's got a lot going on in the future. Could Booster be the right fit? Now to evaluate each Booster, I've determined seven essential Booster characteristics. And I'm gonna take every actor down this Booster Gold checklist. For a good Booster, we need the body, the ego, the face, the experience, the vulnerability, the comedy, and the interest. I'll also be talking about any negatives that may come up. All right, the body. Yeah, Billy is in great shape. He's played plenty of athletes before. The ego, 100%. Characters like this are Billy's bread and butter. The face, look at this face. Try not to punch your screen right now. Now I wanna be fair, Billy seems like a very nice guy who figured out what he's good at and ran with it. So are all of these guys. But I don't think this is one of those situations where you love to hate this character because the actor's like that in real life. I just wanna say for everything I can tell, he seems cool. The experience. Like I said, Billy has been working for a while. He even starred on an HBO series. And HBO is what we used to call Max. The vulnerability. I think this is where I'm not sure what performance sells it for me. Billy's characters are usually jerks who get some form of comeuppance, but don't always have time to reflect on that. In James Bond, he dies. In Aladdin, he goes away. Made for Love is probably the best case for this, and I definitely saw the first few episodes where he plays a tech billionaire who's put his wife in a virtual prison. I think over the two seasons, he does get an arc, not necessarily like a redemption arc, but he gets to show some vulnerability. I think that because I cannot watch it because Max removed it from the platform. So I'm gonna go with the maybe on this one. The comedy. Yeah, Billy is a very strong comedic performer. The interest. As far as I know, Billy has not expressed any specific interest or any reservations about playing Booster. That being said, he was in the Aladdin movie, so he isn't above a studio film, and he was in Made for Love, so he's not above an HBO series. The negatives. My one thing about Billy is he might be too unlikable. Like I said, he's known for playing pure jerks. They're somewhat one-dimensional. And that doesn't mean I don't think Billy could get there, but I just have not seen a performance that is pure Booster. Next up, let's look at Glenn Powell. I've been a fan of Glenn's for a while. Like many of you, I met him as Long Fingered Boy in Spy Kids 3D, but then also as Thorn in Expendables 3, the one with Mel Gibson. He's back! Why is he back? But no, I would genuinely say Powell's breakout role is his time as Chad Radwell in the cult comedy series Scream Queens. From there, Glenn's stock has shot through the roof with bigger and bigger roles in movies like Ride Along 2, Hidden Figures, Everybody Wants Some, and Set It Up. But all of that was a mere staging ground for Glenn's big moment as he donned the RB2132 new Wayfarers and not much else to play the character who we all took one look at and said, oh, so he's the Val Kilmer of this one, Top Gun Maverick's Jake Hangman Saracen. And a new Booster Gold may have been born. Hangman was everything you could ask for in a booster. He was arrogant, 
obnoxious, generally competent, but also well overestimating his own abilities. He was hunky, cocky, and needed to be the center of attention. Looking back, Fal Kilmer would have been a tremendous booster gold, by the way. Mad Mardigan is basically booster gold. But yeah, Powell's hangman was exceptional. And lucky for him, nearly everyone on planet Earth saw Top Gun Maverick. Our dads all saw it twice. And since then, Glenn has been at the top of many booster gold fan casts. With an incredibly bright future lined up, including the critically beloved Hitman, another shot at a most dangerous game movie, which I can't imagine why we're still doing because Quibi did it perfectly twice, and one of those movies where the pitch is these two hot people are hot near each other. But with all that set up, could gold be in Glenn's future? The body. Yeah, solid superhero body. Very famously played football in Top Gun. Also, 34 means he's one of the younger boosters. That could be important. The ego. Oh, this may be the hallmark of a Glenn Powell character. They know they're the best, the best pilot, the best assistant, the best stock trader. This is something Glenn has in spades. The face. Oh, that smirk, it is something special. One of the great smirks of our current generation. The experience. Glenn's been working for a while with a cameo all the way back in Spy Kids 3D. He's headlined big action movies, TV comedies, and everything in between. The vulnerability. A lot of this comes from that Hitman movie, which isn't out yet, but everyone says he's incredible in. I believe Powell can bring the vulnerability to Booster. Even just the rom-coms demonstrate that his characters are able to break down and show some humanity. The comedy. Yeah, forget Top Gun. Powell was funny back in Scream Queens, where he played an impossibly dumb frat boy. I think he's got the airhead side of Booster Gold covered. The interest. One of the only Boosterlers, if not the only one, who has been asked about Booster is not against it. I'm a fan, um, but I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm educated about these new ones. Booster Gold is really funny. Um, Booster Gold's a funny one. He doesn't hate it. The negatives. My negative here is he might be too much of a star for this. Just coming off a breakout role in Top Gun Maverick and the festival buzz calls his performance in Hitman one of the best of the year. It seems like Powell has a very bright future and maybe TV is too much for time commitment. Next. Let's look at Josh Segarra, an enigma of a man. The only non-blonde actor on this list. I don't know if they're all actually blonde, but they tend to play blondes. Josh does not. Josh's road here was fascinating. Basically, a member of the Nando V Movies book club told me I had to include him, and I'm glad I did, because Josh Segarra is a master at playing a very specific type of character that works very well with Booster. You likely met Segarra on the fifth season of Arrow, where he played Adrian Chase. Not really using that as the basis for his Booster, but it's a popular role that people like, so I figured I'd mention it. And I've seen clips and he seems good, but I had fully stopped watching Arrow when he showed up. But still, good for him. The three shows that I think tell Segarra's Booster story in order of importance are She-Hulk, The Other Two, and The Big Door Prize. On She-Hulk, Segarra played Andrew Pug Pugliese, an attorney at GLKNH who befriends Jen and Nikki with his map to the good bathrooms and overall inviting demeanor. Throughout the series, Pug runs cases at GLKNH, as well as goes on silly little missions with Nikki, like their trip to the drip broker which gets Jen her costume, because Josh Segarra loves shoes. This will be a running theme for some reason. She-Hulk's Pug was your classic good guy. Nothing quite wrong with him. Sort of a dork, but well-meaning and helpful. Unfortunately, though, through TV magic, the character was rendered functionally invisible to the show's critics who said there weren't any good guys on the show. What a shame, such jabronis. The She-Hulk writers also skipped Pug's main function in the books. A little will-they-won't-they they thing that the books got bored with and just forgot about. But yeah, so She-Hulk proves Sagara can play a likable dork. Moving on to the other two, where Sagara played the ultimate likable dork. The other two is a series that did not get nearly as much attention as it deserved since it was really, really, really funny. It was about two siblings who were both on the same level of struggling artist whose younger brother basically became Justin Bieber overnight. And floating around the family was the sister Brooks, on again, off again boyfriend, Lance Arroyo. Lance was basically the best guy ever. Friendly, upbeat, supportive, high energy, and sort of an idiot, although how much he was actually an idiot versus how much he was actually secretly a genius fluctuated throughout the series three season run. The case for Lance's booster is tricky since Booster is very much not a good guy, but they share a lot of other traits. Lance is media savvy, a hustler in that rise and grind sort of way. He's pretty unbelievable, often reads like a cartoon character, and he's not that bright. But it's the third show on this list that really sold me as Josh for Booster, The Big Door Prize. For me, 2023 was the year of shows that I liked, but I finished and was like, wait a second, was that really dumb or was it actually good? We'll get to the other one soon, but Door Prize was pure that. In this Apple TV Plus series based on a book series of the same name, a small town is upended by the arrival of something called the Morpho Machine that purports to 
reveal a person's true potential. You get in the booth and get a fortune that says something like daredevil or teacher or liar, and then you have an existential crisis. The show is a comedy about happiness in the same vein of shows like Good Place being about morality. It asks questions like, what makes a person happy? Can you be happy? What effects do our expectations have on our sense of self and fulfillment? All that stuff. The main character's a teacher, most everybody else on the show has your usual small town job, grocery store owner, mayor, whatever. But right in the middle of this is Giorgio, played by Josh Segarra. And Giorgio is unlike all the rest of these guys. He was a star hockey player who went pro and when his career ended he moved back home and opened a bizarre Italian restaurant with a gondola in it. All Giorgio wants is to be loved by the town and his fans and his ex, the protagonist's current wife. So he spends most of the series trying to steal her. Giorgio is everything that works about Lance or Pug. He's friendly, sorta dumb. But if they were liars, scumbags, self-centered, conniving, pompous, everything you want in a good booster gold. Cigar is particularly good at displaying the sense of a man desperately trying to cling to his glory days, something that could very easily drive Booster's first character arc. Like I said, everyone in town gets a card with their true potential on it. Want to take a guess at Giorgio's? Superstar. That is absolutely the potential a Booster Gold should want. The body. Yeah, Josh is in great shape. Like I said, in Door Prize, he plays a former athlete. Can't do much better than that. The ego. Giorgio has an enormous ego. I can absolutely see Josh turning in that kind of performance. The face. I think this is important to mention, although it doesn't really matter for Booster. I do think Cigar just looks like a guy more than some of these other Boosters. Like someone you know, not an actor. Does that help or hurt his chances here? Not really. But again, I thought it was interesting. And on Arrow, he demonstrated he can have a very punchable face. The experience. Relatively new, but putting up solid numbers, especially promising that Cigar has starred in two superhero shows already without actually playing a superhero, so I'm sure that means he would do it. The vulnerability. Not to spoil Big Door Prize for the two of you that will watch it after this, but Giorgio gets a whole episode about how he's a fraud and grows beyond it. Textbook booster. The comedy. Yeah, Josh is really funny, and in a cheesy way. Sometimes you're laughing at him because he's an idiot, but at the same time, you're also sort of happy for him. Like he's having fun and you're having fun with him. It's easy to come up with reasons why Booster is unlikable, but why do we like him? Maybe he has an infectious positivity that cancels out some of the smarm. The interest. So let's dovetail here into the negatives. Remember how I said Cigar is in a lot of superhero stuff? Well, with roles in Arrow, She-Hulk, Scream. Is Cigar too much of a genre guy? Do we lose something? Is part of Booster's charm that he's not one of these actors who's already got a role in every cinematic universe? And can fans of Arrow see Cigar as a lovable dope after he played a master manipulating super killer? Or a lawyer? It's tough to say. Next up, let's look at Jake McDormand. Speaking of shows that I love, although they might not be any good, let's talk about Miss Davis. I really enjoyed this series from the creator of Lost and Watchmen about nuns and magicians and AI. And let me tell you, the cast really makes it. Betty Gilpin is super funny and committed. I loved everything that Chris Dimitopoulos is doing. And then, in the middle, you've got Jake McDormand as Wiley, the heir turned bull rider turned leader of the resistance. People may also recognize Jake from The Limitless Show or his role as Nodge's ex, Jeff Suckler, on What We Do in the Shadows. But Wiley was a lot of people's introduction to Jake, and that character is a wonderful booster gold type. Wiley is confident handsome, roguish, and full of it. Lying left and right, trying to hold everything together, and the best part is, he knows it. He sold the self-loathing that is the heart of a great booster gold. I know it's one role, but man, it's a role. One that screams this guy is gonna be a superhero someday. And here we have a character who fits in what Jake is doing to a T. Could he be a great booster? The body. Yeah, Jake's got the superhero body. The ego. Absolutely able to give off big ego energy. In Limitless, he played a guy who was scientifically smarter than everyone else. That goes to a character's head. The face. Very good face. I wouldn't say it's incredibly punchable, but it's punchable. The experience. Jake has been at the front of plenty of big projects. Miss Davis, Limitless, Quintuplets, The Right Stuff, Greek, and Class of 09. Vulnerability. Yes, I think Miss Davis proved that Jake can play a dork who gets broken down throughout the series. The comedy. Yeah, it's pretty funny. The interest. I haven't heard him talk about any superhero roles yet, but it definitely doesn't seem beneath him. He just finished a series on Peacock. The negatives. So listen, could Jake be a good booster gold? Maybe. But also, let's look at what we have on Miss Davis. A handsome, dopey, trust fund vigilante who is cool but nowhere near as cool as he thinks he is. I think Jake McDormand would be an even better green arrow. 
like a perfect version of that character. He's got everything you want. Hell, Miss Davis might as well be a Black Canary Green Arrow series. Honestly, like Betty Gilpin is not a bad Laurel Lance. So could he work here? Sure. But I think his talents might be wasted on Booster. Next, we've forgotten to ask a very important question so far. You see, this is a Booster Gold show, but it is a Booster Gold show produced by James Gunn. And James Gunn loves to work with actors he has already worked with. Like we said, Chris Pratt, be a decent pick, but you know who might be better? The new gun friend who just got into superhero shape to play a character who is covered head to toe in gold. And the one who commands a significantly smaller share of the budget than Chris Pratt. I'm talking about Will Poulter. If you're like me, you met Poulter in Weird the Millers, where he played the dork next door who got taken on a drug smuggling adventure with a bunch of losers. Since then, he's popped up everywhere with parts in the Maze Runner series, The Revenant, Midsommar, Dope Sick, and that weird interactive Black Mirror episode that we never talk about anymore even though it was pretty cool. But 2023 was Poulter's big year. He played a small but memorable role in what I consider the best superhero movie of the year, Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3, and he turned in what might be the most effective cameo in a show packed with incredible cameos as Luca, the one-time rival of Carmine the Bear Berzato. And the upcoming section on his IMDb page is suspiciously sparse. Is Booster Gold hiding in his future? The body. Listen, if I were James Gunn and I had secretly decided I was doing a Booster Gold show, what I would do is cast the actor I want to play Booster in something else and have him get into superhero shape, even though he's pretty much wearing a big old suit the whole time, so when I cast him as Booster, He'll be ready. The ego. So this is where I might not be 100%. He can play sort of a jerk, but can he play this level of smart? I don't know that we've seen it before. That being said, he's surprised me a lot over the years. I think he could get there, but he doesn't have a performance in him that sells him. I don't know. He pees on that tree in Midsommar. That's a jerk move. He's the Oxycontin dealer in Dope Sick. Maybe. The face. Very distinct, punchable face. The experience. He's been working for a while and he's only 30. As good as you could hope for an actor so young. And he's done everything from indie movies to studio blockbusters. The vulnerability. I do think Poulter is a good actor who can sell Booster's sadness. The comedy. I think it's easy to forget that Poulter got his start on Son of Rambo and a few English sketch shows. Even in a small part in Guardians, I think he's quite funny. The interest. This is a big one. Just played an iconic comic book character in a James Gunn superhero project. Can't imagine why he wouldn't do it again. The negatives. I've never seen him do exactly what I'm looking for with Booster. Like, I've never gotten this vibe from him. But I think he's worth considering because of the gun connection and his rising star. I think he could make a lot of sense here. Next, Ryan Gosling. Before 2023, would I have pegged Ryan Gosling as a paragon of Booster Goldness? Not really. Don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan. I appreciate his dramatic moves like Blade Runner and Drive, but I really love him in the funnier stuff like Crazy Stupid Love, The Nice Guys, and The Big Short. But still, I don't know, he just didn't scream booster. You see, before 2023, a Gosling comedy character was either a pathetic loser, The Nice Guys, or a finance bro. Crazy Stupid Love, Big Short. And while there are shadows of Booster in both of those performances, neither are quite there. I would need a performance where he was a hunk and also an idiot. Where he was likable and punchable. Where he was on the top of the world, but also deeply insecure. Enter Ken. This is a true, extraordinary turn. Gosling went from maybe on the list to a top contender with one performance. Ken is everything you want in a Booster Gold. He's confident, entitled, blonde, dangerous, silly, hunky, lovable, and a loser. It's a fantastic Booster Gold audition. I would say, at 42, Gosling is one of the older boosters on this list. And while that is not that old, it's worth taking into consideration. I think it's fine, since Tom Brady just retired from football a few years ago and he's 46. A quarterback could conceivably play for a while, and sure, Booster's usually a college football quarterback, but I think we can tweak that origin to having him just be a star quarterback if the right actor comes along, and Ryan Gosling very much might be it. The body. Yes, so Barbie finished what Crazy Stupid Love started. Gosling was cemented as a true Hollywood hunk. He has the physique you want for a former football player. I mean, he should. Gosling played cornerback T.C. Williams in Remember the Titans. Although, to be fair, he wasn't very good at football. He was mostly there to dance, but he's played football in a movie before. The ego. Ryan Gosling is great at playing what should be somewhat high-status characters. A stockbroker. Whatever his job was in Crazy Stupid Love. I mean, it must be a good job if he can afford two of those sharper image massage chairs. Ryan Gosling characters need to have an ego to survive in the high-stakes world of finance, or the even higher-stakes world of beach. The face. Pre-Barbie, I don't know if I could see it. Post-Barbie, absolutely. Gosling makes some absolutely punchable faces. Like this one. Or this one. Or this one. The experience. 
Dan Gosling's been working for decades. He started all the way back on the Mickey Mouse Club reboot in 1993. Since then, he's become a huge star with a ton of pressure and remained relatively poised. No big fights or anything. The kind of composure you want from a franchise player. The vulnerability. I think Ryan Gosling characters are defined by a deep sense of self-loathing. They know they sort of suck. They're not good enough. Booster knows that too. At the end of the day, this awareness and willingness to change is what makes Booster Gold work. The comedy. He's been funny pretty much his entire career in plenty of movies and things like that, but what I really love is his SNL work. He is so funny on that show. The interest. Okay, so this one is tricky. He's expressed an interest in a superhero role before, but it's Ghost Rider. Which, sure. Honestly, I don't know how specific he was getting, but I'd actually love to see his Danny catch. Either way, I don't know if Booster is on his radar, and if it was, I don't know if he'd settle down for an entire series. I don't think it's beneath him, but it is a huge time commitment. That being said, the dump truck full of money has done crazier things before. The negatives. We got two. First one, he's 42, which is on the older side. But the second one, he might be too good for this. I've heard people pitch Ryan Gosling as Animal Man, a character I do expect to see pretty soon. Would his talents be wasted as Booster? After all, Animal Man is a much more difficult character to cast. Last one, I don't know what to say about Ryan Hansen's Booster Gold that is not already said by one very specific role. I was introduced to Ryan through the short-lived yet beloved sitcom Party Down. I love it so much because I used to be a waiter, which is the sentence I say whenever I tell people to watch Party Down. I'm not sure why I feel like I have to say that, but I always do. On the show, Ryan played struggling actor, musician, slash mostly waiter Kyle Bradway. And Kyle has a lot of booster. He's hungry for fame. He's sort of a tool. He's not that bright. It wasn't bad. And were it not for a bit of research I were doing for another part of this video, I probably would have left it there and put him in my honorable mentions. But as I was looking up Joel McHale's recent work, I stumbled upon a series named Ryan Hansen Solves Crimes on Television. And guys, this is a Booster Gold show. Like 100%, the show is everything I want from Booster Gold. It's a crime procedural set in an LA where the mayor has deputized a bunch of actors who are either filming their own cop shows or researching cop roles. Ryan plays himself, Ryan Hansen, the actor from Veronica Mars and Party Down, who believes every cop problem can be solved by acting, and who is desperately trying to get that next big break to catapult himself back into the spotlight. And like, man, if you switch the word cop for superhero and actor for superpowered influencer, Ryan Hansen Solves Crimes on Television becomes a Booster Gold show about a C-list hero solving crimes alongside a real superhero in an attempt to raise his profile so he can join the Justice League. And this show only works because Ryan Hansen is so good at being absolutely unbearable. Ryan spends the entire show talking about himself, about acting, about anything. Partially because he's so self-obsessed, but also it becomes clear that mostly Ryan feels inadequate and needs to compensate by proving that he knows things and he is valuable. And the series does a wonderful job of both constantly reminding Ryan that he is genuinely an idiot who should not be doing this and also constructing situations where his very unique set of skills, acting, networking, doing escape rooms, helps to solve crimes. Not because he makes sense, but because Ryan is a product of Hollywood, the most ridiculous place on earth. But what really works about this show, and why I think Ryan could make a terrific booster, is that he is excellent at feigning confidence and letting that artifice down just enough to make you root for him. Like yes, he is painfully annoying, but unlike say Magnuson and Into the Woods or Powell and Top Gun, you know that no one thinks Ryan Hansen is more of a fraud than Ryan Hansen. And that, I believe, is the heart of Booster Gold. Why we love him. James Gunn has described the Booster Gold show as being about imposter syndrome as a superhero, and that's why Ryan Hansen feels so right. He's great at playing this douchey character, but also excellent at throwing in a line or a look that says, I know this isn't working, but this is all I know how to do, so I'm gonna stay positive and keep trying. Honestly, Ryan Hansen solves crimes on television should be the blueprint for a Booster Gold show. Confident, idiot superhero teams up with an uptight, all-business hero, which could be Ted, but could also be someone like Mr. Terrific or Elongated Man. And the two do superhero stuff. Watch this show. It's on YouTube Red or Premium or whatever the hell it's called now. And tell me you don't see it. The body. Yeah, so I didn't expect anything extraordinary here, but Ryan can do a flip. That's pretty cool. And in 2019, he led the movie Turkey Bowl, playing a former high school quarterback who goes back home to play another game. So very booster. I will say Hanson is also 42. 
same age as Gosling. The reason I don't think it's quite as big of a deal here is he's just not as famous as Ryan Gosling. Sure, he's been acting for a while, but not nearly as high profile. And I think being in the public eye dates you. Like, we know Gosling was in The Notebook in 2005, almost 20 years ago, so he must be at least 40. Hanson's harder to pin down, which means I think he could easily play 40 or a 40-year-old pretending to be 35. That's very booster. The ego, absolutely. Ryan Hansen has been playing Hollywood influencer types since Party Down in 2009. The face. Try not to punch it. Every thumbnail for this show is a masterclass in making a punchable face. The experience. So Ryan's been working for a while with parts all the way back in the motocross movie of 2001. Like I said, he's played struggling actors, washed up quarterbacks, and in good on paper, he even played a con artist. This might be his slumdog millionaire moment, like everything in his life has been leading to this role. The vulnerability. Yeah, this is where Ryan set himself apart from some of these other guys for me. His characters tend to be just self-aware enough to know that they suck. And that is the tightrope this series needs to walk. Booster needs to be genuinely unbearable, but every so often he needs to break, just a little, to show that he's still human. The comedy. Super funny, known for comedies, moving on. The interest. I've never seen him asked about this and I would love to hear from him because I'm not the first person to think of him for this role. I don't think Ryan would turn it down, seems willing to do something like this. It'd be funny too because the most recent season of Party Down begins with his character, Kyle, snagging the next big role in the Party Down universe's MCU and then immediately getting cancelled and losing everything. So he's played an actor playing a superhero before. The negatives. He's on the older side and he's not the kind of big name that's going to get the show the attention that Gosling or Powell would. But man. I could see it. The winner. This is genuinely one of the hardest casting decisions I've ever had to make because I see so much of Booster Gold in all of you. You have so much potential, you're so funny, you're so talented, and even so many of the people I eliminated, I think I'd be very happy if any of them Play Booster Gold. I don't know if I can choose just one of you. So I'm going to go off script here. And no, that doesn't mean I'm going to choose all seven. I'm going to pick two. Because first, Glenn Powell. I cannot deny that you have everything I'm looking for in a Booster Gold. You're young. You're funny. You're handsome. You're a big star. There was so much of Booster in your performance in Top Gun Maverick. I've never seen a face on screen I've wanted to punch as much, and as many times in that movie. You got a great future, you're going to be a huge star. I would be honored if you would accept this Booster Gold action figure and play the role of Booster Gold. Much appreciated, Pops. So that's one. But I also cannot deny that Ryan Hansen Solves Crimes on Television might as well be a Booster Gold show. And Ryan, your performance on that show is everything I want from this Booster Gold. You're so funny, so quick, so annoying, so good at being slightly self-aware. There's two seasons of a Booster Gold show that might as well already exist. It starts with him live streaming the episode to his fans, which is how the Blue and Gold comic starts. It's perfect. And very few people watched it. No one I talked to has seen this show before, even though it has a million views on YouTube, apparently. So Ryan, Hanson, sorry Gosling, will you accept this Booster Gold action figure and play Booster Gold in the new DCU? All right, all right, all right. So there you have it. Either Glenn Powell or Ryan Hansen are my two favorite Boosters Gold. For different reasons, they play different versions of the characters. So this is completely up to James Gunn, but I think these two actors are the most promising potential Boosters that I could find. Now before we go, I want to tell you about our sponsor for this video. It's one of my favorites, Trade Coffee. We've talked about them before. They are a coffee subscription service. They use master brewers and they use machine learning to figure out what coffee is going to be best for you. They have over 55 different local roasters. I just got my bag today. Here it is. Comes this nice red bag. I'm going to open it. Great Heights by Joe Coffee. That's what we're going to be drinking tomorrow. So I'm going to go brew this coffee. It takes about 12 to 13 hours. I'll see you tomorrow with a nice cup of coffee. All right, everybody, it is the next day, and we got this Great Heights by Joe Coffee. I brewed a carafe of it yesterday. I'm gonna drink some of it on camera. Here it is. This is my one of my very favorite mugs, my Corrections Jackals mugs from uh, Late Night with Seth Meyer. So, And you know, full disclosure, I already had a cup of this today because there's no way I'm gonna get started recording video stuff without having coffee, but I will have some on camera to prove to you guys that I did have it and enjoy it. Here we go. 
It's tasty. It's good. Another cool thing about Tree Coffee, it's not just the subscription. If you want to try one of their starter packs, you can start with that. And then if you like that, you can sign up for the subscription. And to help upgrade your morning routine with better coffee right now, Trade is offering our viewers a free bag of coffee with any subscription at drinktrade.com slash Nando. That is drinktrade.com slash Nando for a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase. One more time, that is drinktrade.com slash Nando. As always, huge thanks to everybody that continues to support the channel on Patreon, everybody that watches these videos early and ad-free on Nebula, everybody that listens to my podcast, mostly nitpicking, and everybody that follows me on Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. I'm Nando V Movies on all those platforms. That's all I got. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.